Guys, today we are going to discuss about the general features of humerus. Humerus is a long bone of the arm which starts from the shoulder joint and ends at the elbow joint. Humerus consists of three parts. The first one, this part is known as a upper part or the upper end. And this one is known as a shaft. And this part is known as a lower part or the lower end. So if we come to the upper end, the upper end consists of the head. This one is a head. The head is superiorly, this one is a medially and posteriorly located. So this tuberosity like structure is known as a laser tubercle. This one is a laser tubercle and this also tuberosity like structure which is larger than this this is known as a greater tubercle so the name of the laser tubercle is because of it is lesser than the greater tubercle so head is located medially laser tubercle is located anteriorly greater tubercle is located laterally and there is present of the groove like structure this structure is a groove like structure which separate the laser tubercle from the greater tubercle and this sulcus is or the groove like structure is known as a intertubercle sulcus intertubercle sulcus and this also known as a intertubercle groove this also known as a intertubercle groove and this line which separate the head from the laser tubercle greater tubercle and intertubercle groove this line is known as an anatomical neck this line is known as a anatomical neck and there is also present a line which is known as a surgical neck so the surgical neck separate the upper end of the humerus from the shaft why the name of this is a surgical neck the reason is this because this part of the humerus is the most fractured part so that is this name is a surgical neck there are nearly about of the seven parts comes into the upper end this one is a anatomical neck this is a head this one is a laser tubercle this one is a greater tubercle this one is a intertubercle groove this one is a surgical neck and below the four four to five centimeter of the surgical neck below to four to five centimeter of the surgical neck there is also present a line which is also known as a morphological neck this line separate the epiphyseal line to diaphyseal so if we come to the shaft of the humerus shaft of the humerus basically consists of two halves the first one is known as the upper half this one is a upper half and the lower one is known as a lower half the upper half is rounded in nature while the lower half is in triangular in nature this one is a triangular in nature and the shaft of the humerus contain the three borders this border is known as a medial border the border which is toward the head this border is known as a medial border this border is known as a medial border and this border is known as a anterior border this border is known as a anterior border while this border is known as a lateral border this and the intertubercular groove contain two lip the intertubercular groove contain two lip this lip is known as a medial lip why the name of this lip is a medial lip because this lip is toward the medial side and this lip is known as a lateral lip while the name of this lip is a lateral lip because this lip is toward the lateral side and the medial lip is the progression 
of the laser tubercle while the lateral lip is the progression of the greater tubercle this one is a medial border the medial border form the medial lip of the intertubercle sulcus while the anterior border while the anterior border form the lateral lip of the intertubercle sulcus and the lateral border form the deltoid tuberosity like structure this structure is known as a deltoid tuberosity and behind the deltoid tuberosity there is a groove like structure which is known as a spiral groove which is known as a spiral groove or it is also known as a radial groove through this groove like structure the radial and the profunda brachii nerve pass if there is a fracture into the deltoid tuberosity so the radial nerve and the profunda brachii nerve is the damaged why the name is the profunda because it is a deep in size why it is a deep in size and the humerus contain the three surfaces medial border and this one is a anterior border so this surface from the medial border to anterior border this surface is known as the anteromedial surface and this surface basically form the floor of the intertubercle groove this one is the anterior border and this one is a lateral border so the surface which is present in between of the anterior and the lateral border is known as the anterolateral surface this and this surface contain the deltoid tuberosity this surface is known as contain the deltoid tuberosity behind the deltoid tuberosity there is present of the spiral groove through this spiral groove the spiral nerve or the radial nerve and the profunda brachii nerve is passed and if there is a fracture into this region then the profunda brachii and the radial nerve is damaged so if we come to the lower end of the humerus the lower end of the humerus basically consists of the condyle like structure this structure is a medial epicondyle while this structure is known as a medial epicondyle because this structure is toward the head this structure is toward the head and this structure is known as a lateral epicondyle this structure is known as a lateral epicondyle and this medial epicondyle is greater in size than the lateral epicondyle and there is a sharp ridge like structure above the medial epicondyle this structure is known as a medial supracondylar ridge this structure is known as a medial supracondylar ridge and this structure which is above the lateral epicondyle this ridge like structure is known as a lateral supracondylar ridge lateral supracondylar ridge the lower end is divided into two parts the articular part and the non articular part the articular part are the trochlea and the capitulum if you see here is the pulley like structure this one is a pulley like structure which is known as a trochlea this trochlea attach with the trochlear notch of the ulna while this rounded structure which is a capitulum the rounded structure is known as a capitulum this structure attach with the rounded head of the radius and above the capitulum there is a present of the fossa this fossa is known as a radial fossa this fossa is known as a radial fossa and this fossa is basically for the flexion for the flexion of the elbow joint or the when there it is for the accommodation of the radius the head of the radius when it attach with this fossa and it provide the flexion while above the trochlea there is also present a fossa which is known as a coronoid fossa when the trochlear notch of the ulna will attach or the articulate with this fossa then it cause the flexion and if we come 
to the posteriorly view the posteriorly view there is present of the fossa which is also known as the only cronan fossa this is known as the only cronan fossa and this fossa is basically for the extension of the elbow joint this one is a for the extension of the elbow joint and this fossa for attachment of the ulnus this one is known as a head of the humerus this one is known as a head this all is known as a head which is one third this one is known as the anatomical anatomical neck this is known as the anatomical neck this is known as a greater tubercle this is known as a greater tubercle this is known as a laser tubercle this is known as a laser tubercle this is known as a surgical neck this is known as a surgical neck and a groove like structure which separates the laser tubercle from the greater tubercle this is known as a intertubercle sulcus or the inter tubercle groove you can also can say this lip which is toward the medially and it is the progression of the laser tubercle this is known as a medial lip this is known as a medial middle lip and this is which is the progression of the greater tubercle this is known as a lateral lip this form the three borders the first one this present border which is a medial border medial this border is a anterior this border is a anterior anterior border and this last border is known as a lateral border and this one the, in the lateral border there is present of the deltoid tuberosity deltoid tuberosity and there is also a groove like structure which is known as a spiral spiral groove and there is present also contain the three surfaces anteromedial surface a m surface anteromedial surface anterolateral surface anterolateral surface and third one is known as a posterior surface which contain the olecranon fossa and olecranon fossa accommodate for the extension of the elbow joint and if you come to the lower end in the lower end this is known as a medial epicondyle medial this is known as a medial supracondylar ridge supra condylar and this structure is known as a trochlea this is known as a trochlea and this is known as a coronoid fossa this is coronoid fossa and this radial fossa in which the radial head of the radius will be joined articulate radial fossa and this one is a lateral epicondyle and above the sharp like structure which is also known as a lateral supracondylar lateral supra epicondyle lateral supra epicondylar and if we come to the posterior surface this is present of the which one only cronan fossa only cronin fossa so this one that's all about the general features of the